So I received a message from Ryan Croft the other day, and he was saying he wanted to finish painting the tail on his Mattel Kentrosaurus, and he asked what colors I thought would be a good match. Now, not having painted this figure yet, I wasn't sure, but I told him I would go down to the studio and test some paint to see what colors he would need to continue to paint down the tail. As I was down here, I decided to put a quick video together. So for those of you wanting to do the same, would have the information on hand to do it with all of the guesswork taken out. Ideally, you would want to do this before assembling the parts, but since I've already put the tail and spikes on, I'll just roll with it and work around everything. The first color you want to apply is the brown. Now I have the perfect color match here with this War Paints Zombie Side uh, Dirt Splatter. But this paint comes in a set off of Amazon and it's something like $25 or $30, which for the casual painter is pretty pricey for six tiny bottles of paint. So to make things easier on everyone, I'll just be using cheap Apple Barrel craft paints. I've mixed these three browns together, chocolate bar, melted chocolate, and burnt umber in a one-to-one -one ratio to achieve the same color as the factory paint on the Kentro. These are the only Apple Barrel Browns I have, so there may be a one color to rule them all brown at the store that would work without having to mix, but I am unaware of that color, so for the sake of the video, I'll just be mixing these three together. Best thing to do when color matching is to apply a little drop on the area you're wanting to match and then dry it and see what it looks like. Then you can tell if you'll need to lighten or darken the paint up. And uh, since acrylic paint is really easy to clean up, it can be simply wiped off with a wet rag or a paper towel. Now this brown mix matches perfectly, except for the finish. These paints are matte and the factory paint has sort of a satin sheen to it. So once you get the paint matched just right, uh, you can apply a finish when you're done to match the rest of the body. Applying the brown is pretty straightforward. The best thing to do in this situation is to blend your brown up into the factory color just a little bit to help ease the transition between the two. Then simply paint and match the factory pattern all along the side of the tail. Once the brown is done and dried, you can then go in with some matte Mod Podge. And be sure to cut the Mod Podge with some water so it flows better over the figure and doesn't clump up in the recesses. Give it a blast with a hair dryer or the heat gun, and keep in mind that even though the Mod Podge says it's matte, it doesn't have the flat matte finish like the paint does. It actually dries with a slight factory sheen and blends in perfectly with the figure. So at this point, you could stop here and be done, and it already looks 90% better. But here at the compound, we like to take things to the next level, so I decided to paint the spikes on the tail and the sides to kind of break up that boring milk chocolate color. I think doing this will really take this figure to 100, and that's the aim of the game here. So again, I would use this War Paints Zombie Skin to paint the spikes because this paint has really great coverage, but again, not everybody has access to it. So the second best thing to do is to break out our trusty Apple Barrel Khaki and use this on the spikes. This paint won't have the best coverage over a dark color, so you will have to apply a couple of thin coats. Be sure they are thin because you don't want to clog up the details on the sculpt. Now again, ideally you would want to do this before assembling the figure, but for you crazy brave people out there who like to live dangerously and have already assembled the figure like me, this is definitely a hold your breath moment right here. You want to be as neat and as clean as possible. Once you have all these spikes painted, it's just a matter of going through and adding a few more paint apps just to enhance some of the details. Again, these are all optional, but we've already come this far might as well go the extra few steps to really tie this guy together. So I'll be painting the beak the same color as the deco on the tail, and I'll add a slight brown shade around the eye area, and then I'll paint the eyeball black with a tiny little light catch in there, just to bring it to life. I personally think this looks better than the yellow eyes that it comes with. I'll take that same brown paint and paint the top part of the skull and then wipe it off, leaving the brown paint down in the recesses. There are a lot of details on this sculpt that can really shine with a nice shade wash, but to not complicate things, I'm just going to do it on the top of the head. Now I'll take some gloss Mod Podge and gloss up the eyes so they're really nice and shiny, and then paint the nails with a simple matte black paint. 
And here is the finished Kentrosaurus looking great with a nice complete paint deco. Now there are so many options to take on this route. If you have an airbrush, you could airbrush some fades on the spike with transparent burnt umber, or you could give the entire figure a shade wash to really bring out the sculpt even more. But for the sake of this video, I wanted to keep it simple and easy to follow and keep the toyetic nature of this dino intact. For a more complicated repaint, be sure to stay tuned for the next video because I'm repainting another one of these with an insanely complicated deco that really takes this figure to a whole nother level of awesome. But until then, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and you found the information provided helpful and it has inspired you to give your Kentro a makeover. If it has, remember to tag me over on Instagram at the Jurassic Park Compound because I love seeing the work that you guys do. For more Jurassic related content, you know where to find me. Links will be in the description box below. You guys take care and I'll see you around the compound.